Hello and welcome back to the channel. You've joined myself, Dr. James Gill, for another clinical skills adjacent video. Today we're going to be dealing with a urological emergency, that of testicular torsion, where the testicles twists and you lose the blood supply to the testicle. So let's really make sure we understand how serious this is. If you don't have a blood supply to something, it dies. To that end, if we don't manage to intervene surgically within about six hours of the testicular torsion occurring, we may very well lose the testicle. Or to reframe it, um, this is like having a heart attack. We get the pain from uh, the damaged heart muscle. We're getting the same acute onset pain as the blood supply to the testicle is impaired. Now, there is a, um, an important differential diagnosis, that of epididymitis. So where we've got an inflammation to the epididymis uh, that sits around the top of the testicle. The main difference there, though, is that that pain is going to be more of a chronic onset, maybe you know, a few days, maybe hours onset, as opposed to what could be coming on suddenly in the minutes uh, with a testicular torsion. So with that in mind, let's look at the symptoms that might occur. So testicular torsion, we're going to be dealing with uh, a male between typically teenage to early 20s. However, you can have a testicular torsion at any age. Now, it's more common after puberty because the testicle grows in size with the change in the scrotum. So at that point, you've literally got more mobility down there. But as I say, any age can be affected by it. So acute unilateral uh, testicular pain is a torsion until proven otherwise. Other symptoms that might be associated with it, you may have uh, back pain, you may have abdominal pain, and because of the severity of the pain, you may end up having vomiting. Now, thinking about that differential diagnosis, the epididymitis is going to be chronic, severe gnawing as a rule of thumb. Um, you know, that pain is going to be severe all the way down to uncomfortable. With a testicular torsion, again, we're talking like heart attack. You know, we've got that impairment of the blood supply, the testicle is dying. And that's probably going to be the worst pain that that individual has ever experienced. Now, I go back to the um, symptom of abdominal pain. That's a particularly important sign, especially in the younger age groups, because it may be the only thing that a child is presenting with who's unfortunately experienced a testicular torsion. And that's why on all of our clinical skills videos, when we do the abdominal examination, we highlight at the end that we would do an external genital examination. Because if you have abdominal pain, one of the causes of that could be testicular torsion. Now, when it comes to examining the patient, um, there's a couple of signs that we can find or not as the case may be. There's something called the cremisteric reflex where we stroke the inside of the thigh and that causes the testicles to rise up ever so slightly. That is lost in a testicular torsion. Now, there is another sign that we can look for um, when we're doing the uh, scrotal examination to help us determine if we think we're looking at a torsion or an epididymitis, and that is friend sign. With friend sign, we elevate the testicle, we lift it up, and taking gravity out of the equation, in an epididymitis, the discomfort improves slightly. In a torsion, because we've got that impaired blood supply, and literally just picking up the twisted tubes doesn't improve the blood supply, we have no improvement in the pain. So that's, again, going to make us think much more that we've got a torsion here. When we examine the testicle, we may actually find a change in the position, but this isn't always the case. We may find that the testicle has come to lie horizontally by comparison to its um, uh, other sibling in the other side as part of the scrotum. Again, that's going to help build our picture, um, our, our worry that we might have a testicular torsion. Well, moving the testicle between your fingers, you may find that it feels much firmer than the opposite side and potentially probably is going to be much more painful. We might find that it appears to sit 
um, uh, more in a horizontal line, as in it's turned over on its side because of the effect of the twisting there. We might also find, again, because of the twisting, uh, you know, we're literally shortening the cords, that that testicle is elevated and may even retracted ever so slightly, which is one of the reasons why one of the clinical signs, um, the cremasteric reflex, is absent. But here's the crucial bit. If you're not sure, refer and or you know, take to theatre. The reason being is, even if you think you have a testicular torsion and you want to get an ultrasound scan, which can confirm that diagnosis, we should not in any way, shape or form delay that individual getting to theatre because the diagnosis is a surgical diagnosis. We need to go into the testicle to explore, to know what is going on there. Now, when we do go inside uh, the scrotum, we may find that the testicle has torted, in which case, hopefully, we can literally untwist it in theatre and we'd hopefully see the blood supply returning and no evidence of necrosis or testicular death. If it looks like the testicle is viable, then actually they will suture the testicle in place to stop it um, torting again. So because you've had one testicle that's torted, you're at risk of the other one going as well. As a result, they're going to suture that testicle at the same time to prevent that one potentially spinning in the future. Now, there is a, um, a condition, the bell clapper testicle, that could predispose you to um, testicular torsion. The reason being here is normally the testicle sits quite firmly and is fixed in the scrotum. With a bell clapper testicle, there's no connection with the tunica albica, which sits around the, um, the, the testicle. And as a result, we end up, again, with a horizontal lie of the testicle. And again, because there's no um, fixation of that testicle, you're again much more likely to have a torsion and a twist. So that's the, um, the overview of a, a, a urological emergency, the testicular torsion. To reiterate, if you think um, you're dealing with a patient with a torsion, get that patient into surgery as quickly as you can, or certainly a senior review. Um, a testicular torsion needs surgical intervention. There's nothing that we can do about this from a medicine side. And again, if in doubt, refer. Get this, uh, get this seen because we've got that six hour window to potentially um, um, save that testicle. Hopefully this has been a useful overview. If you'd like me to try and um, connect more um, surgical and medical signs and emergencies with the clinical skills that we've already discussed before, stick, stick something down in the comments and we'll see if we can cover that for you. Again, if it's been useful, it would really help me if you could um, like and subscribe to the channel and hopefully we'll get to help you with some further videos. Take care and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.